<laughs> Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Carol Murko. Hello, Carol. It's so good to see you. Don, it's such a pleasure to be here. I love the whole concept of your your podcast and and you already. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just okay. I just need everybody to know that has not heard of you or doesn't know. Like I looked your name up. I thought, you know, I don't really delve in too much to try and find people's backgrounds because I want it to be fresh and just, you know, like yeah. I'm getting to know you just as my listeners or viewers um, are. But I was like, am I talking to the right Carol? Because I was looking up and there was like, you were doing cooking shows and there were all these, di all these different things that you've done. And I'm like, is this her? And it was your face every time. So I'm like, okay, she has a huge background. So <laughs> you were doing television, you were doing, um, cooking show type of things. And then you got something, a disease in your eyes. Is that mm -hmm. where everything turned? Pretty much. I mean, I'll, uh, I'll just kind of just give you a little more. Yeah, um, go for it. Thing. So yeah, so I mean, I'm 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 60. So like, I have a lot under my belt already. So I mean, I spent 15 years in financial services. I right. fought a sexual harassment suit. I um yeah. So it just and then and then moved to the country, um became a stepmom and and had to reinvent myself out out in in the country and that's sort of when the 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 cooking thing happened because uh i i always loved cooking and i grew up in a three generation household italian household and um and i took a career workshop called getting to next because i just thought gosh i keep hopping from one thing to the next and what's wrong with me and the best thing that happened out of that workshop was the woman who ran it it's just like, you just have many motors, Carol. You just have many motors. And she's like, you know, a lot of people can just get on one track and they're happy and that's that. But she said, you, you're you curious and, and you have the capacity to do many things. And so good for you for not just kind of going, well, I should just do the safe track, right? And yeah. so, um and and that's basically been my life is 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 just listening to that little voice in me and and not turning it off right um but that didn't mean that it didn't that didn't carry some uh trauma for me because you know it was traumatic ask me what i do right <laughs> <laughs> I could never answer the question. I was like, oh my God, these people are going to think I'm crazy. And then I basically just said, I do a lot of things. I have a lot of motors as soon as I went to that thing. Anyway, she got me like, she she gave me permission to focus on the motor of cooking because I thought like, I have all this education. How can I go back to this basic thing that I learned when I was a little girl, right? Mm -hmm. And um, And then I just decided that I would go all in and, you know, I had a, a radio show on a, a local NPR station and then produced a couple some, some public television uh, shows. And, um, but what, what happened after all of that was I, you know, out of the, I mean, literally the clear blue, these eye symptoms just showed up and I was like, what the heck? And it was really like, um, it's called bird shock chorioretinopathy. It basically, it was, it was like there was a million bloaters in my eyes. <laughs> and I, I, um, and that just kind of took me like, yeah, like, like right. and, um, and it was scary. And, but I never, I, it's, I didn't ever lose my, I never panicked. Like, I don't even know if I ever cried. Right. Like it was sort of like, okay, this is, this is my next and I'm going to explore what it is. I'm going to listen to the Western model, but I always was like, I've got to explore everything else too, because I knew enough just from cooking and from all my, all my own curiosity about life that there was a million other modalities out there. Right, <laughs> and, right. And that I needed to um, explore all of them and not just limit myself. And because I was also really into food and I understood that food was medicine, 
Um, and I also knew that there were lots of, lots of toxins in our foods and in our environment and, and all of this other stuff. And I thought like, well, I've got to do radical things now. I have to really understand, you know, functional nutrition, right? And so I went to and got my health coaching certification and wanted to understand which foods were anti-inflammatory and 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 that sort of thing. And then I mean, I met, I, like, and, and it just, everything just sort of started showing up. It's like a shaman shows up. I was like, okay, we'll work with you for a while. And then, <laughs> um, like, and acupuncture, which I had never done. And then I met this magical acupuncturist and um, she just, I remember she worked on me and, and right after I was diagnosed and she's like, I've never worked on anybody that was more depleted. And I thought to myself, I would never have described myself as depleted, um, but uh, from the Chinese medical perspective, it, it's that I I had I depleted a lot of my inner ability to heal, right? So I so I must have just worked. I was doing too much. My motors. I had too many motors going. <laughs> <laughs> you needed a new engine. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and it turns out I had the gene for the disease and all this other stuff. So, anyway, um, as I was m migrating through the whole um, Western model, though, the disease is an orphan disease, and so there's not a lot of research on it. And so, what happens is that I became a human guinea pig with you know different drug cocktails and all this other stuff. And so, well, my eyes weren't getting any better, and my but I was getting sick from all the drugs. And I just one day decided I was actually um, on Nantucket and I was walking on the beach and I just had a download. And I was like, you're done with that. You're not going back. You're going to heal yourself. And I literally, I have, that was in 2018. I have not been, I have not stepped foot at Mass Ioneer since then. I took myself all of, off of all of the drugs on um, everything I've been doing has Basically, I I activated my own inner healing, and all my symptoms are gone. And wow. um, and so, as a but I, I I started kept doing more and more certifications. I just I was just like because I I and the things that really helped me were meditation, and in particular, I studied with Dr. Joe Dispenza initially as just going to his retreats and reading his books, and then. I had such profound experiences with meditation that I um, I got certified to teach his work, and then I also really um, had I had studied. I'd always been interested in the martial arts. So for when I was in my thirties, I was a student of kung fu, and so I understood that there was this medical martial art called qigong, and so I I pursued finding um, a qigong um, school that I thought was really interesting. And, um, and we had COVID and, and then all of a sudden these masters were teaching online, which they never would have done. I would have had right. to travel and everything. So I ended up getting certified to teach Qigong and also use that for my healing. And, and then the food thing was always front and center with me anyway. So I was able to, you know, um, alter you know change my how what I was eating and how I was eating like even salads I learned through Chinese, traditional Chinese medicine are cold foods and that our digestion really needs to have warmth to work like ice drinks all that kind of stuff is terrible for your digestion at least really? according to Chinese medicine yes. and, um, and I believe that because you know our stomach is is warm right and you and and if you put something cold in there it, it you could uh, you could imagine those digestive juices just sort of going oh you know I had to work harder mm -hmm. so when they have to work harder then that's depleting energy um oh, and the okay. other thing that I've learned both through meditation and traditional Chinese medicine is that you know we we spend easily 70 80, 80 70 to 80 percent of our time in stress and it's subconscious, right? I mean, because stress has been so normalized in society. Mm -hmm. And you know what happens when we're in stress? <laughs> like our pupils dilate, our stomach di di uh, juices um, like just stop working because all all of the focus is to run, fight, or, or hide. 
-hmm. So, um, so, you know, you think about all, all the people who have IBS or irritable or mm -hmm. any of this stuff, I think the majority of it is from just <laughs> stress and, you know, eating the wrong combinations of foods and also how they think, right. What they're, what they're thinking about. So that's the long kind of sort yeah. of way get where we are now. So, um, but I have to say the diagnosis was um, probably the most profound thing that's ever happened in my life. And it's, it's changed just about everything that. Gosh. Isn't that crazy? So when you were doing all the radio shows and all that stuff before, did you feel like in your gut, like this is, this feels good. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. Or were you still yearning and thinking there's, there's gotta be more, there's gotta be more. And then with the vision stuff coming in and you started to learn all this new stuff where you're like, okay, now I see this is where I'm supposed to be. I mean, when are, how, do you even feel that yet? <laughs> um, no, I feel like I, I have been divinely guided to what I'm doing. Okay. And that the universe, ha you know, just was just like, okay, you were paying attention, you know, whack, 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 whack. <laughs> until we have to, like, now you're going to pay attention. Um, and what's really interesting is the um, self mastery work because what that really focuses on and what I help people with when I teach it now is to identify these old conditioned patterns that we have that keep us in a, a loop that's keeping the hormones of stress in our body. And I just wasn't aware of them. Right. right. And so, um, so while I was doing heirloom meals and doing the cooking thing, I mean, it was, that was my passion love project. Mm -hmm. it, it just, um, but I couldn't for the life of me figure out how to make money. And so the, what I was doing was I continued to do other. So I, you know, cause in PBS and NPR, you have to raise your own money. It's right. not like, like, so, so I'm raising enough sponsor money to pay everybody else to help me produce the show. And then there's nothing for me. And I'm like, why can't I figure this out? You know? Right. And you're I spinning think I your had wheels. a lot of stress in, in, in that, you know, because I was working seven days a week. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like a fraud, right? Because everybody would meet me and they're like, oh my God, you're so successful. This is so, and it, <laughs> I was just, I didn't, you know what happened because of that? I did. I created so much beauty, but I never relished it, right? Mm -hmm. It was, just, I, I saw the deficit, right? What I, what I didn't have, which was like a robust bank account. Yeah. Yeah. But then you have to think too, like, does that measure success? No, it's not paying your bills if you're not making any money, but you were so fulfilled and it was your passion and all of that. So there, there's a lot to be said for that too. So I'm glad you got to experience all of that. It's just, I understand what you're saying. If you're not, if the money's not there, then you're having to work other jobs so that right. you can make ends meet. And then I could see why you would get depleted. That makes total sense. Yeah. But I, I don't know that I was aware, right? So that was my right. whole that, that that was what was operating. And, and I remember um, it, when I started doing just the only, the practices to help me heal, like the, the stuff that would show up when I was journaling. And I, I was so surprised because I would never have, have understood how these negative emotions that many of us have are so subconscious and so unconscious mm -hmm. that, um, and, you know, for instance, I had, I, I was addicted to frustration and disappointment on some level, right? Like, so it was just like, oh yeah, that was good. I gotta go. You know, it's like, it was just, or I had such expectations for myself that I, you know, and you don't meet them. So what was I, I produced this amazing thing with heirloom meals, but because the money wasn't there, I had this underlying feelings of frustration and disappointment mm -hmm. and that maybe I was even, you know, like a failure or, um, and, and then embarrassed. Like when people were like, you're so successful and blah, blah, blah. And I just, I just, and I get that success isn't money, but at that time, I think it was for me. Right. It was, or was part of the success that was missing. Mm -hmm. And, um, so what a journey, but I got to tell you, it's just like 
now, you know, money is all good, but the success is in in helping people evolve themselves. And mm -hmm. and I mean, I kind of basically say that I'm just a loud voice for, for love now. And I help people activate their inner healer. Yeah. Well, you said you were journaling and meditating and stuff. And I think when we are so busy and we're used to that automatic autopilot of go, 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 even if it's not working, we're still doing, 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 doing. And until you are allowed to stop and really go in and think yeah. about what do I want? Why am I doing what I'm doing? And COVID did that for a lot of people. If they haven't had the opportunity before, then COVID was definitely a way for people to kind of be stopped dead in their tracks and rethink where they're at in their life. And if they want to go back to work where it's like, I didn't even like that job anyway, you know, I, yeah, I think it really made people look back and see if they're on the right path, but so fascinating to me. I want to ask you, cause I want to talk about thoughts and law of attraction, all that, but really quick, when you're learning all the Chinese medicine and everything about plants and herbs and all that stuff, were you on the right path with the heirloom meals cooking the way that the, your heritage, the Italians, or were you eating things that were very inflammatory and probably causing a lot of your health issues? Cause I mean, you weren't running through a drive through you're making everything from scratch. So you think of that as healthy, but right. was it healthy? Um, I'm going to say that well, a couple of things, a, my husband was diagnosed with celiac disease in 2006. So we, I was already a gluten-free household. So, but what's, what's interesting is that a lot of gluten-free stuff is very unhealthy and very inflammatory. Like okay. I, it's, it's fascinating, right? Cause everybody's like, but I'm eating gluten-free, like, <laughs> yeah, but like they do like mimic the you know taking out gluten then they're adding in all these like stuff like that's not Fake healthy stuff, so right. um so i really like so we were already on a very healthy track that way and um but truth be told i'm i have been a cheese a holic <laughs> it's just so good <laughs> <laughs> so good yes. um and i think that definitely impacted my digestion right i mean if if i Given, you know, if if there was nothing you know, wrong with cheese, at least, I mean, I think I would just eat cheese and sourdough bread for the rest of my life. <laughs> A lot of people would do that. <laughs> it's not just you. <laughs> so, so, um, but we were, I'd say we were very, very healthy in terms of uh, our, our diet. I mean, I have a big vegetable garden. I was buying organic food way, you know, for, for, for years and years and years. Um, and I think even doing heirloom meals, I was very much on the pulse of, you know, the farm to table movement mm -hmm. and the buy local movement. And so I was even was on the, the board. We had, I live in the Berkshires in Western mass. And so I was on the board of Berkshire Crone, which is an organization that, that whose mission was to keep farmers farming. And so really actively buying, at, you know, very you know, hyper local food and um, and meats and, and all that stuff. So I really think that um, the hierarchy of health is it starts with your thoughts. And so you first you are what you think and then you are what you eat. And I do believe that for me, it was probably typical at least, you know, from now that I talk to a lot of women, you know, so many of us are, there's like some self-loathing and all this, because we, you know, we grew up and we're, you know, are you thin enough? Are you pretty enough? Um, and um, accomplished all of, all of that stuff, right. That, mm -hmm. uh, that just underneath the surface, you know, we just didn't ever, even though, with all the accomplishments and I can't tell you, I mean, I know people who are, you know, run major companies and still feel like they're imposters, right? Like, yeah. And I think it's how we were conditioned as, as little girls becoming young women. And, 
Um, and I'm hoping it's changing, but I think it had a really, it certainly I think had a big impact on, on my, my, my own, um, self-love or self-worth and, um, and that's the stuff that shifted in me right now. It's just like, okay, this, this work is really all about self-love. Yeah. That's wonderful. You gotta love yourself first. Yeah. And we have such a hard time with that. And I don't know why that is because, um, you would never allow anyone to talk to you the way that you talk to yourself. And those thoughts just keep going and going and going and going. And it's like, oh my gosh, if somebody was talking to one of my friends or my mom or my sister that way, I oh. would be like, Hey, <laughs> but I'll look in the mirror and be like, what the heck is your hair? Why are you? Yeah. I can't believe you went right. out like that. Or what are you wearing? Yeah, exactly. Why do we do that? Why do we yeah. do that? I don't know. We're we're conditioned to do it. We're, you know, what do we, you know, ever since we were little, you know, what do we see? Airbrushed models, right? Yeah. Perfection. Um, and so we are falling short of that perfection. So we just look at ourselves and we're like, well, why can't I look like that? Or, and it, and that is all, you know, I don't think we're even consciously aware right. that we're doing that to ourselves. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so I do think society's done a job on 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 us, and I think that it's not just modern society. I have a feeling it's as, as a result of centuries of right, <laughs> yes, um, yep. and and now I believe that we're all being tapped to wake up and and you know, bring the divine feminine into the forefront mm-hmm. and balance out the you know a very masculine you know, world that we've been in. I mean, war, I mean, all that kind of stuff. It's like women don't start war wars. I mean, yeah, yeah, true. I mean, unless you go to an all girls school, <laughs> I went to, I went to Smith. So like, I went to, we, we, you know what I mean though? You yeah. know, girls can just be terrible to other girls. Women can be terrible to other women. It's like, you never outgrow it. Yeah. Because they're taught to be, we're taught that we're competition for each other from men, right. For positions, because there weren't a lot of positions, you know, in, 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 in the corporate world, up the corporate ladder, because one, we're taking them away from men. And now we have to compete with the women Mm -hmm. for those jobs. So we, it it was, now I believe that women are coming around to the fact that at least maybe in my circles, or maybe it's because I'm looking to create that is you know we we don't compete with each other anymore Mm -hmm. right it's just like we hold each other up and um and I'll tell you when you get to that point in your relationships with other women it's like it's just like magic because we all want to see each other thrive thrive. yes 100 percent. and I think what a lot of that is like you said, in your circle. And I have my group of friends is like that. There's more of us out there than we're led to believe. There's more of us out there that are really rooting for each other than the ones that are ready to be out there tearing people down. So that gives us some hope. <laughs> There's oh, hope I, out there. hope. I, I might be a Pollyanna these days, but I, <laughs> I, I think that, um, that so many, just like you said, you have your pockets. I have my pockets and your friends have their pockets, right? right. It's not just your, it's like, and all of this is happening. Like yes. Very yeah, that's true. So I just have faith that because this is happening, that we're somehow being tapped on some level to be light workers in our own way mm-hmm. and to raise the consciousness of the planet. And that I truly believe, even though it looks kind of dark out there and it looks very still heavily weighted to right older men I do feel like we are going to witness a shift and and that what's going to fill the void is is us right our love right our our women's voices and and the divine and we're going and it's not going to be ruled by the divine feminine we're just going to have the balance between masculine and feminine Mm -hmm. which is what we Right. And it starts with us personally, ourselves, not yeah. necessarily our peers. Like, and if we are all building ourselves up and feeling good about ourselves, that's contagious. That is mm-hmm. contagious. Then all of a sudden people are like, I want to be around them more because they are always happy and they're, they've got good things going on. And yeah, I love it. I think, I think you're right. I feel it. I feel that 
women are starting to feel really empowered because they're starting to love themselves more, no matter what their shape is, no matter how far they've made it in college, how many children they had or didn't have all of that. I think people are starting to become proud of themselves on that level. And that can only promote positivity. So I think it's wonderful. Yeah. And just think of the healing that is for going back generations and going forward, right? Mm -hmm. That we're not going to carry those, those, those wounds anymore. And that we really step into, like you said, our power in, and in, in the sense of, and I think our power is love, right? Nurturing. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I love it. Okay. So let's talk about the way that we think how, what would you say without giving all of your secrets away, what would you say is a good place for someone to start that needs to start rethinking the way that they think way to start training their brain to not go to the negative space? The first step is awareness. And, you know, cause I think what happens is it, people think that, well, if I just think positive, everything's going to change. But the problem is, is that our bodies have been become both conditioned and habituated over time into thought patterns. And 70% of the time we you know, statistically spend our time having negative thoughts. And, and let me just give you a few other statistics. So we have six, we have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day. 90% of those thoughts are the same. Of those thoughts, 70% of them produce the hormones of stress. Gosh. And, yeah. And this is, and and so when you know you have that many thoughts, you realize that most of them are subconscious or unconscious thoughts. Yeah. Cause so, you don't realize you're thinking them. Exactly. So the reason why I say awareness then is that we, you know, first you need to be, you have to make the unconscious conscious because you can think positive, right? But you're still, you're still like somehow having all these negative thoughts and feelings. And those are the ones that are producing the hormones of stress, which are addictive. So you just continue to stay in them. So the first step is, I mean, I, I'm a big proponent of journaling. It's just, what are you thinking? I mean, literally like be really honest with yourself. Like, I, you know, like, like I, how I really learned that I, you know, had stress because I would never have just described myself as stressed out because I thought I had everything under control, right? Like, (laughs) but um, because my to-do list was under control, but that didn't mean I had anything under control because that's like fault. That's like, that's what we do. Like we try to control, you know, that way. But, um, but when I really, really was honest with myself and I started looking at my thoughts when I woke up in the morning and what would I think of? I think about my to-do list. And I think about like, oh gosh, you know, I got to call my mom and I have to do this and I have to do that. Oh gosh, I got it. Oh, look, it's a little late. You got to hurry up, go walk the dog or, and then, and then go uh, to your spin class. And so what kind of state of being would that put me in? Uh, only, just five like when minutes. You open of, your eyes. Yeah. Stress. And so just spend time being painfully obvious, painfully honest with yourself Mm -hmm. about what you do think about. And once you begin to identify that, oh gosh, you know, I am, I'm creating stress for for myself. I, you know, so obviously I've put too much on my plate or, um, or I, oh, you know, I'm noticing that, um, maybe it's something like, oh gosh, you know, I tried that outfit on last night and it was a little tight. So now I feel fat or whatever, right? All these things just, they're there, but you never are really, really, really aware that you're thinking that. Yeah. Like it comes and it makes you feel like crap and it might go away, but it's still like the effects of it are still lingering there. So be, so if you do say that, like, oh, you know, I feel overweight, I feel chubby, blah, blah, write all that stuff down because then you begin to see that you're judging yourself, right? So then, so that's maybe you're addicted to judgment. Maybe you're feeling unworthy. So, and, and then, then you begin to think, well, what thoughts would make me feel worthy? What thoughts would not be judgmental? 
what thoughts would um, be productive for me? And that's the, so the first step is knowing what you no longer want, because those are generally in that, that th those are the ones that are creating the hormones the loop. of stress. The mm -hmm. loop, right? And so, and then figure out a target that you want, because even saying I want to get rid of them, then you don't know what to replace them with. So if I'm, so if I am having an insecure thought and I want to feel like I belong, right. So that I'm just going to basically say, okay, stop that. Right. I'm just going to stop that thought. And I'm going to say, how do I really want to feel? And I want to feel like engaged and that I belong or, um, and, and that process of stopping and targeting like is, is really powerful. So that, I mean, it sounds it, and you know what? It requires practice and work. Like there's mm -hmm. there's no magic bullet or pill, whatever you want to call it. I'm not take the bullet out because that's a very masculine thing, right? <laughs> there's no magic. Um, Stop that thought. <laughs> right, exactly. How did I see? I mean, these are, you know, those are the things that I'm catching myself. So we have these turns of phrases that we grew up with that are based on more or ma very masculine terms. And, you know, I, I was reading something the other day that, you know, when we say the whole nine yards, well, that was the, um, the, 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 you know, for a machine gun was nine yards long for all the, oh. so I used the whole nine yards. Right. So I was like, wow, I will never use that again because that's like a war term, right? Like, right. <laughs> But we don't even know this. And, you know, I'll, I'll take it a step further. I don't know if you've ever read um, uh, Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin no. Wall. I'm gonna write she that down. is this, she's a botanist. She's a poet. She's Native American. She teaches in the SUNY, the New York State uh, school system. I can't remember which, which one. Um, but when she was growing up, um, she really loved plants and then when she went to college and um the first thing her um professor said to her is like well tell me why you want to do this and she said well nature has created perfection she said you know in the fall she said there's um goldenrod and purple asters and those are complementary colors you know nature is magic and you know what her professor said to her i think you're in the wrong field i think you want to go to the art department you know like <laughs> and oh, geez. but anyway she stuck it out she got her phd in um in in botany but then she went back to her her native american um roots mm -hmm. and 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 now has married these two things but she has a chapter in that book which is called the language of animacy and what she discusses in that chapter is her um her difficulty at first in learning her native tongue and because it's nothing like english right um mm -hmm. so in the in our languages in the romance languages we have i think something like um 70 nouns and only 30 percent verbs in the um, native american tongues it's the reverse oh so interesting is a, a doing right a, a, and so she began to realize that um the native american languages were languages of inclusion where thing everything was a being you know a, a blade of grass was a being and and the way the that 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 the language worked was that it was we were all connected mm. in our languages we are a language of separation so us, them, he, she, um, just, just that alone, but every, you know, we, so at even the most basic level of our language, we've been taught to live in separation. Wow. That's and so interesting. Isn't that profound? Yeah. I don't wow. even know where it's going with this point, but anyway, <laughs> It doesn't matter. I'm like, what? Say more. That was <laughs> like, like, that's it though, because it's like, I, you know, I guess, you know, it, it's just, I don't even know if I would have paid attention to that chapter. Right. 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 I would have been yeah. like, right, like in my old self, in that pre, like evolving 
being who I am now self. Um, you are not ready. I, I wasn't ready. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many books and I'm sure you have that too, that I picked up and I was like, Oh, I don't even know what this means. And then right. now I own them and I read yeah. them all the time. And it's just yeah. like, whatever that saying is about when the student is ready, the teacher will come. <laughs> or, I right. believe that, you know, you just have to be ready. Um, okay. So when we talk about our thoughts and, um, I know it's that where you're thinking your brain will start to believe that whatever you're thinking is actually real. And then, you know, your, your body starts to feel it and whatever, but how do you get past the point of like, where you feel like you're pretending or fake it to make it type of mentality? Do you understand what I mean? Like your brain or your body will think it's real if you really project and think about it all the time, but how so, do you get to that place where you don't feel like a fraud? <laughs> trust. It's all about trust, right? So, you know, the, the practice of clear intention with an elevated emotion. So for me, when I was going through the process of, of healing my eyes, I would go on long walking meditations frequently. And I just would em envision the because I have the gene for the disease for the gene unwinding, right? Like reversing, okay. mm -hmm. reversing the gene, um, seeing clearly, and then marrying it to how would I feel when I was healed, right? Like, and that emotion of joy and freedom and wholeness. Mm -hmm. And I would just, I would just do that every day. And I just trusted that, that the process works because there, the, the biology and the neuroscience supports supports it and right. so if um and then then the quantum quantum physics right so yeah i mean this is really the the game changer is that modern science is fine has finally caught up to ancient wisdom mm -hmm. um you know by the way traditional chinese medicine and all of its teachings with the five element consciousness system is quantum physics it's all no. quantum physics about invisible energy mm -hmm. because the other thing that changed from at least when I grew up is that, that we thought the atom had like a nucleus and all right. this other stuff the atom is empty it's 99.99999 percent energy so that means that this us right we're only 0. 0.0001 is this everything else is energy isn't that crazy though it blows your mind <laughs> if you sit there and think about it too hard it's like Oh, I don't understand. It doesn't make sense. Right. But we're now, I believe, being asked to like step into the understanding, right? To like to own our energy, to own that we are energy. So it's like, so it's so the uh, the other concept that you are, I think, alluding to is like where you put your focus is where you put your energy. Mm -hmm. So that's really what we're directing. And by the way, um, you know, a thought sends a single out si si signal out it's your emotions that draws the, that draw the experience back. So that's why you want to have that clear intention. And then if you're have the intention that I'm healed, but then I'm like, Oh my God, I don't know if I'll ever heal. Right. Yeah. You get healed. Right. right? Yes. You're, you're not going to have, they have to be aligned. You have to have um, your thoughts and your actions and your feelings all have to be aligned. I always say if, if your thoughts, words, and deeds, are not in alignment, you're going to know it because you're going to feel a negative oh. emotion. Mm. It, but when you're in, when you get diagnosed with something, how in the world? I mean, that's so difficult. I'm assuming to just be like, like you said earlier, Pollyanna, like, okay, I'm just going to trust that everything's going to be fine. When you feel like, oh my gosh, my vision, this is a life sentence. I'm going right. to lose weight. Like, how, did you have those bad days or did you just trust? I, don't know. And I didn't. I, I, I just, first I, I, I trusted the, 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 you know, I put a lot of faith in the, the Western medical model, mm -hmm. right. Cause I was going to the top specialist in the country and, um, but I, something bigger was happening in me, right. It was just definitely, where like, why did a shaman show up? Why did I trip into the most amazing acupuncturist? And, right. and then all of these other things just sort of 
it wasn't like I was kind of looking right. But then what showed up is what I pursued. And, um, and so I, I guess I just knew, right. Yeah. And I guess that's why I wanted to start teaching because I think that we all have a knowing, right. And, and that's that I think, I think maybe I finally, because of, of the diagnosis, I, I, I really did wind down, down my life. And so the other really cool thing, interesting thing happened is that literally, um, like when I was just feeling like, oh my God, I've spent all my money on heirloom meals and, um, and I don't know what, what I'm going to do now. And, you know, every, it wasn't really, it was working from the external, but not internal. And, mm -hmm. um, and I get a call from a friend of mine who's actually, she was on Nantucket and she's like, oh, she's like, we're looking for um, a membership director. She was working for this club out there. And I was like, that is ridiculous. Right. And she's like, I think you should interview. She said, I think it would be good for you to come to Nantucket. And so I got off the phone and I told my husband, he's like, oh, you would love Nantucket. And I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I thought he would be, he would have been the same way. Right. Like, right. that's ridiculous. And so. I, I decided, okay, I'll interview and we'll just see where this goes. And anyway, I got hired and it was, it was interesting because I felt like that was divine on some levels. Cause like, it's, it's not a job. I, I was so overqualified, right? Like it was sort of like, okay, I'm, you know, I've been on TV. I've run a major financial, you know, um, right. a firm. I've, you know, blah, 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 blah. And now I'm Julie McCoy, right? Like I felt like I was. <laughs> <laughs> and here are the tennis courts. <laughs> <laughs> but I tuned in and I was like, this is grace. This is grace. I don't have to worry where my money's coming from. And they paid a hundred percent health insurance. How is that even conceivable right like mm -hmm. so all of a sudden I have grace so that I have spaciousness to heal mm. were you religious before all that no <laughs> or spiritual uh, yeah, spiritual. yeah spiritual. but but not like Jesus take the wheel kind of no. no I uh I grew up Roman Catholic and uh I think I I learned early in probably um when I was making my confirmation that it was, it was, it was, was, yeah. I mean, I, I was like, we were, you know, practicing to, to do whatever. And yeah. so the Monsignor says, okay, everybody be quiet. And the two kids behind me were talking. So I go, and he goes, you, and he puts me on the other side of the, of the church and tells me I can't make that confirmation. Oh, oh so my I'm, God. Like, um, it doesn't even give me a voice to say, but I was just, yeah, doing, right. Mm -hmm. Like, and, um, so I really was, it was a, that I feel like it was some sort of gift too. Cause it was like, it made it, I was like, wait a second, you're supposed to be the embodiment of love of Jesus mm -hmm. of God or whatever. Right. And, and, you know, you're representing this on, on earth and, um, and I thought this is this is this is a fraud, and um, I don't. I think this is completely. And that was it. I I think I only went to church because my, my family went to church. But as soon as I went to college, I was like, done. done. <laughs> Chapter <laughs> closed. <laughs> Let's think about it now, and I I hope I don't offend anybody. But seriously, coming to you know being born with the original sin and you spend your entire life trying to get rid of it is ridiculous like yeah you know, we are you know we're born out of pure love like this is like we are pure love and and that's probably another conditioning right to think like it's like from early on that we're taught that we're bad like and we have to like repent for it our entire lives <laughs> yeah undo all of that uh, so anyway, I apologize if I offended anybody, but, um, everybody I, has their beliefs. Exactly. And so I, I, and I love you for them, whoever you are. And, uh, but I just truly believe that we are 
of God, by God, for God. We are all God. You're God. I'm God. And that, um, and that, you know, God shows up for us every day. Like, you know, I mean, there's just people who are, you're, you know, are God for each other. Like we're, um, and that's, that is such a beautiful way to live, right? Like to mm-hmm. just to see the divine in, in, in every being that you come across, um, is just, and that, and I'm not, it, it sounds sort of like, hokey that it's even coming out of my mouth because I still have like thoughts like <laughs> what a jerk or whatever right like sure um, yeah nobody's perfect yeah I'm, you know, I I hosted a retreat this weekend and you know there was just one woman who I was like okay she's getting under my skin <laughs> you know this work you know she's in a bad place that's why she's here yeah yeah like, every doing a little talk was just like <laughs> I was like figuring out on a chalkboard. And so, you know, we're always being tested mm-hmm. in that way, not in the like, oh, you're going to get tested to like, it was just sort of like, have you evolved, Carol? Like, can you be, you know, greater than, you know, than, than this, 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 this thought. <laughs> right. And <laughs> give somebody read. else grace, give right. somebody else grace to be <laughs> annoying. <laughs> <laughs> You're so good at it. Stick with what you know. <laughs> I also realized that like by the end of the workshop that it was just her resistance, right? Like she showed up because she she knew it would help her, but she was the most resistant of the participants in like embracing the the work. And um and and then, you know, because she, you know, she's in a defensive place right now. She just lost her job, all this other stuff. So I, I, I totally, but, but it didn't stop me from my humanness. Right. A a few thoughts. Yeah. Right. You are only human. I do. (laughs) It seems though that a lot of people do have like for you, I would say it would be your eye disease. You know, there's some people that they lose everything. They lose their spouse, their death, whatever. And that's when they have their epiphany or eye opening or spiritual enlightenment, whatever you want to call it. And I think it's when we realize that we really are not in control And that's a really hard thing to let go of, like your to-do lists. And we so want to think that if we can control everything, it will turn out the way it's supposed to. And it's just (laughs) not, you know? So I'm trying, that's my, my word for this year is faith, faith in me not having the steering wheel. It's just going to happen the way it's going to happen. I'm going to try my best, try my hardest and hope that it's a good outcome. That's all you can do. Yeah, we turn it over. I mean, there. Um, it's I. I. I don't know if you know Mike Dooley. He wrote the book called Infinite Possibilities, and um, I became certified to teach his work too. I just weave it in, right? I don't like just do his mm-hmm. whole program. But, like he has this concept of the GPS, right? And so the notion that you put, and the GPS is usually the feeling that you want, and so. You say you want freedom, joy, you want abundance, whatever it is, feel abundance. Um, And then you take baby steps to move towards there, but you don't try to control every like step along the way because then we, we, we potentially limit our potentials, right? Like, because like we're trying to drive it into this direction, but just over there is like the best thing ever. But because we're over here, we're never going to see that. So you just know how you want to feel and just allow um with action steps of our own to you know to to start guiding us there but just but don't be stuck on our controlling paths that so many of us were taught to do right it was just right it, it's once again it's not and none of it was bad right but it's just we have an opportunity now to to co-create with the universe to mm-hmm. like have, um you know a lot of people ask me like how how do I get my clients and I'm like the universe <laughs> like are you kidding me I'm like no anytime I'm like okay <laughs> like they're, you know I'm kind of at the end of a bunch of clients or workshops or whatever I do a, I do a, an abundance meditation for a couple of weeks and then I, you know and then they come from places that I least expect I go to a dinner party or this or yeah. that um and I but I am doing I am trying to do more normal marketing but uh, I have to say, really, it's it's the universe. <laughs> like, yeah, 
Well, and it's not always about the destination. I mean, really the journey is where you, I get to meet you and I get to meet all these people that give me new perspective. And then I bring that into my life and it all carries through. It's not all about let's just, when are we going to get there, there, there? Cause the, the destination, once you hit that, that's it. <laughs> That's right. the end of the road. <laughs> it is. It is. And um, and the thing is, it's I guess it's Anne Mara Lindbergh, right? Right, who wrote it's not the um it's it's the journey, not the destination that matters. And right. um, I think that um I think that is the most profound lesson that we yeah. need. And living in the now, right? It's living right now. We're we're talking, yeah, you know, we're both super present. Yeah. We you know there's that energy like that's happened because we are. Right. And um, and, and that's really the power. Because the thing is, we could have our focus so out there, right? And what we want. And and we might miss all the beauty in the gap, right? Yeah. And um and so it's really, yeah, faith. I think I love that that that's your your word, your mm-hmm. your your guide for 2024. Yeah. Yeah. Just to be receptive and open to whatever happens because you never know who you're going to learn from. It could be somebody like you, or it could be somebody that bags groceries at the grocery store. I feel like we all have lessons out there. So, oh my gosh. Okay. Carol, do what else is in for you? Are you going to write a book? Are you like, what else? Are you good? Are you going to stay doing what you're doing? Oh yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in, I, I have a couple of books in me. I do still plan on writing, um, like a memoir with recipes. Um, so I'm not abandoning the food part. Um, and I, I do think that I have a lot to say on the, on the topic of, of self-mastery at this point and healing. So some maybe smallish book or around that. And then, um, but I, I, I want to, um, just, I want to touch more people. I really yeah. want to, um, to help people. I mean, like, I think I mentioned I had, I had 10 amazing women, in a workshop this weekend and it was it was so profound we had an 86 year old woman who had started a theater company and her husband died a couple of years ago and now because of her age they're like kind of pushing her aside and she was feeling a lot of grief but Aww. she has so much wisdom that she's not ready to she's british and she's like and oh, it was like she left with such clarity like oh that's and, awesome and, you know, she, she's like, oh, because she's like, I don't have to do it in that same, it doesn't have to look the same. Sure. I can create over here. I can, I can, my legacy can live on if I just, just shifted my perspective. And, mm-hmm. and she, she left a completely, but 86 years old, not that's giving wonderful. up. That amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You're never too old. It's, to make a difference, oh, to stop learning. You're never too old for any of it. You just have to be I, open to it. I think yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And, and then there was just, uh, and I, and I don't just teach women, but guess what? <laughs> we're the ones <laughs> who are doing this work. It seems the majority of, you know, uh, even if you go to a Dr. Joe Dispenza workshop, it's like 95% women. I wonder what he thinks about that. I wonder if he thinks like there should be more guys here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know that he, he, he'd love to see more guys. I think it's just, you know, I, I but there, I think, you know, it's like, but interestingly enough, the main, the big teachers are guys like, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, I mean, I don't know if you follow Wim Hof at all. He's that Dutch yeah, guy. I, yeah. Working, yeah. So he's a male, my Qigong master's a male, like, um, my duly male, right? These are and the and, and authors of a lot of those types of books, Wayne Dyer yeah. and um, right. Neville Goddard and all that. Yeah, they're so I mean, I honestly, I can't even think of one female book that I have right now on my in my stack, except, you know, like, like I had mentioned the beautiful um, braiding sweetgrass, but right. Hers was this Native American botany thing, right? Like, but still a really profound book. But but whatever, right? At least maybe, you know, and 
and you know my husband wasn't into it but he's slowly evolving into it I can understand that yeah with this podcast my husband's like so who did you talk to today and he wasn't raised like that so it's opening his eyes too not that my way is the right way it's just interesting because he's you know sciencey and a Virgo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jim's definitely. And he, he, he gets it too. He says, you know, as a, as a guy, he said, you know, there's a serious break. We don't really have, we don't know where we fit anymore. Right. Cause there is this like old white guy patriarchy thing going on. Right. So it's like, well, you know, that, and then, um, and then there's all this stuff about quantum, right. That isn't, isn't, you know, does the certainty of the scientific method right. of inquiry right? yeah <laughs> it's belief not proof or whatever right yeah yeah so and he he out you know he admits it he says it's just it's it's a leap for him to to you know he wants proof and I was like honey aren't I proof enough right like <laughs> <laughs> my eyes I'm good like I'm driving I you know oh um, I'm so happy for you that is wonderful I'm so happy for you that your eyes are, I mean, I couldn't imagine how devastating that would be to hear that you might not be able to see and things that we all take for granted. So that's wonderful. You got a miracle. I'm happy for you. Carol, it was so great talking to you. I seriously could just sit and talk to you forever. This was wonderful. And I wish you the best with all of your stuff. I will get everything into the show notes so people know how they can find you if they want to go to one of your retreats or whatever. But um, yeah, thank you so much. You just, you're a bright light. And I think it's so interesting, all the different things that you do that brought you to where you are today. I would never consider you a failure in any way. I don't <laughs> consider myself a failure. By any, That's in great. My, I'm done with that. That's my old self. <laughs> <laughs> That's old Carol. We're not talking about Carol, that old Carol. <laughs> right. That's right. All right. Well, thank you so much. Thank and you. I will be in touch. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Don't you too. All right. Bye-bye.